Lopez. That's a good play there from Amy Elliott, just as Fiona Kelly was going in, and Amy Elliott with a long ball, and there's room and space here for McCready. McCready inside the D, can she get the shot of it? Flicks it back, and it's just behind Rachel Walsh on that occasion. I think it is over on that side. But St. Andrew still on the attack with Gabby Lewis. Lewis now wins it back off McGovern, but it's flicked inside, and it's still St. Andrew's on the attack. The ball comes across. Anna Dunhook forced to flick it away, or kick it away, I should say. And it's going to be a free hit to the Jazz, but a very, very good attack again from St. Andrews, Lisa. Yeah, that was a, a really big opportunity. Um, if Robin O'Leary on the back post had been in a good position, uh, she had an open goal to finish, but uh, the pass just went a little bit astray. But uh, definite warning signs from St. Andrews that they're not going to stop with two goals and they're looking for their third. It's the Jazz now badly in need of an early goal to get back into this game. That's Fiona Kelly. That's good. On the attack on that occasion it was Fiona Kelly, but it's gone over out the, out, over the far sideline. And it's going to be a free hit to the Jazz. It's going to be Ethan McGovern again to take this. Looking at her options up front. She decides to go with it herself, takes on Gabby Lewis, beats Gabby Lewis. Lewis gets a flick to it though. And away comes Mark McCready. McCready now on the run for Andrews. And McCready now. Been chased down by Rean Spillane, but it's still McCready. Rean Spillane and Maddie Mitchell trying to dispossess her. The ball's gone wide from a St. Andrews point of view, and it's going to be a restart for the Jazz. It's McGovern now tries to clear. It's gone, it's falling loose to Amy Elliott. Elliott now is not a player that you'd want to leave loose in possession. Plays the ball out to O'Leary. It's hit off a uh, Jez foot and it's going to be a free hit to the St. Andrews side. Much more composed effort from St. Andrews in this game. Seemed to be full of nerves against Crescent in the opening game of today's action. There's the Lana Rothwell and Katie Jane. Marshall. But I want to. It's Marshall's diagonal ball. Well intercepted on that occasion by Gillian Downs on the Jez side and it's going to be St Andrews and it's back to Marshall just inside her own half she'll bring play into the Jez half a good diagonal ball well kept inside there by Juliet Byrne but Byrne has lost possession and then wins it back Byrne now in possession on that left hand side well ma Marshall and that's occasion by Fiona Kelly and it's the Jez with another free hit to be taken by McGovern a decent start for St Andrews at the beginning of the second half, Lisa. Yeah, what they've started to do now is find a couple of long balls. Uh, Katie Jane Marshall is actually going past Amy Elliott and finding the left and right mid and even the forwards. Uh, we've got this, the, the ball has got through to Martin McCready who's had a couple of dangerous runs. Um, so the Jets will be working hard to find out where can they put pressure on to win back the ball. Because uh, Andrews are finding long balls and short balls. And you can see now they've just won a short corner from a long ball into the circle. Another short corner for this St Andrews side. We all know what happened. The, the last one they had ended up in Katie Jane Marshall scoring their second goal. It's a big opportunity here for St Andrews to power home their advantage with a third goal. And the Jez, from the Jez's point of view, it's a must that they keep this out. It's going to be Juliet Byrne again to take this. The St Andrews number 13. She's looking for a ball, no sign of one yet. In the end, it's Robin O'Leary finds one for him, plays it across to Juliet Byrne. So plenty of options here for St. Andrews from this short corner. Byrne plays it, stopped by Lewis, comes back to Marshall again. It's shot, it takes a deflection inches wide of the post. It's going to be a long corner for St. Andrews, but a lucky escape for the Jays there, Lisa. You know, I think Anna who just got the inside of her boot to that one to send it wide. So that's a fantastic save. I don't think she had much time to see it coming. Um, and it means that they're still in a chance here. Uh, they'll be trying to stop the St. Andrews attack and get the ball so that they can outlet and get the ball back down the pitch. It's Amy Elliott loses possession here. But it's brilliantly won back. It's J Katie Jane Marshall with the high flick. Oh, and <laughs> Anna who just has none of it and bats it away, powers it away really. It's gone out over the silence. Juliet Byrne for St. Andrews. Plays the ball back. There's Devin Akins there for 
St Andrews and it's Byrne it's just a bit of a messy play but Byrne gets a flick to it it's going to be a free hit Gabby Lewis is about to take and Lewis now and of course anyone that knows her will know she's a very accomplished international cricket player with Ireland again it's going to be another short corner here for St Andrews and they're really starting to pile under pressure yeah, I think it's only a matter of time when you start to rack up the short corners uh, in attack. It's only a matter of time probably before they'll put one away. Um, so we'll see what they'll they'll come up with now and see if they can get the third goal or whether Anna O'Donoghue again and her defence will stand strong uh, to, to clear this ball. Another big chance for St Andrews. Where's the ball's played back? Lewis, it's Marshall again. Marshall with the shot. Saved by O'Donoghue. The flick there. It's gone wide. It's going to be a free hit, in fact. Two to Jez. Apologies, it's going to be a long corner to St Andrews, is it? No, again, I was right the first time. It's a free hit, which Ethan McGovern, the Jez captain, will take. And she plays it out to this right hand side to Fiona Kelly, but Kelly's unable to control it. And again, it just seems at this moment in time that the Jez are struggling to get any foothold in the second half. And they need that to change in the next couple of minutes. Of course, two goals down. First half goals from Gabby Lewis. And Katie Jen Marshall have St. Andrews in firm control as Marshall plays the ball out to Lana Rothwell. Rothwell now plays it down that right-hand side and receives play possession again. Good pass from Rothwell. Unable to control it on that occasion. Was Julia burning away. Come the Jays. Ball's played forward now onto a run. It's, in fact, it's going to be tail out and go out over the end line Molly Kelly Greeley was never going to get to that one the Jez I suppose in one sense just trying to keep possession up there keep the ball up in St Andrews territory Lisa. yeah and you can see they're finding it hard to get any uh, ball further up the pitch and here we have Andrews with a 3v2 in the circle Joey Lord with the shot what a save from Anna O'Donoghue uh, and it's going to go out for a sideline ball St Andrews very quick attack and Joey Lord left in acres of space there and could have been a third goal it's Lord again with possession flicked away by a St Andrew or a, sorry a, the Jez defence and away they come on the other side of the game in full possession an important tackle there from Katie Jane Marshall as if the ball had come to Zaro too even though she's 40-50 metres from goal she was clean through but either way It'll be possession with the Jez. St Andrews back in possession now. Rachel Diggin. Diggin plays the ball inside. It's a good pass to Amy Elliott. Brilliant turn by Elliott. And away comes St Andrews on the attack now. It's a good ball by Elliott. On Joey Lord on that occasion. Unable to control it. Another big chance, but Amy Elliott showing her skills there. Yeah, uh, Elliott's got her first cap for the senior team uh, just earlier in the year. And she's somebody who just shows um, at school's level, uh, there's nothing is impossible. You know, if somebody's got a cap at under 18. Uh, so she's an exciting player to watch here and uh, Gabby Lewis, the captain of the Andrews team, has done a phenomenal job for her team and has had many chances so far. She'll be looking to win a corner and get a shot here away. And yeah, short corner, she's got one for her team. Uh, Gabby, Gabby Lewis undoubtedly one of the stars on the St Andrews team. She was kept relatively quiet by Crescent in the first game, but she's shown in this game certainly that she's going to be a player to watch for the rest of this tournament and beyond. It's going to be another short corner for St Andrews as Alana Rothwell comes back onto the field. Onto the pitch and on the umpires whistling to hurry St Andrews on with this short corner. It's going to be Juliet Byrne. And every short corner so far it's been Byrne to Lewis setting up for Katie J. Marshall. Will they try something different on this occasion? It's Lewis with the setup. The shot's there from Rothwell. It's a low and it's blocked on the line. Some epic defending again from this Jez team and it's coming away down this left hand side as they look to attack but one possession it's going to be a free hit to the Jez but again Lisa another chance goes a begging for St Andrews another bit of excellent defending though it has to be said yeah absolutely excellent play to take that ball off the line from uh, the drag flick 
And I think uh, what St. Andrews would need to do now on their short corners is uh, look for some variation. They've gone direct on four or five and you can see that the Jez defence is very strong and, and well able to handle it. So I, I can imagine if there are more short corners for St. Andrews, they'll probably look to switch it left maybe where there's a bit of space or to go right as well. Thoughts of former Irish international Lisa Jacob for this game. Third game of the Kate Russell Hockey Tournament 2019, hosted by St. Andrews College here in Blackrock, County Dublin. Brought to you live and exclusively on Sporting Limerick. We've already seen wins for Crescent College against St. Andrews in the first game. We've seen Banbridge, the Ulster champions, draw with the Southeast champions and current holders of the Kate Russell Kilkenny College here in the th St. Andrews' second game, they lead Connacht champions, the Jays, Colossal ignored two goals to nil through Gabby Lewis and Katie Jane Marshall as Martin McCready on the attack here for St. St. Andrews McCready now faced by three Jays defenders, does brilliantly holds on to possession, gives the ball back all the way back to Devin Aikens, and Aikens in no hurry plays the ball back again to Alana Rothwell and K Katie Jane Marshall with a long, long ball up front well controlled by Julia Byrne initially. And she was fouled, so it's going to be a free hit to St. Andrews, who, to be honest, they've quelled every attack or counter-attack that the Jays have had so far in the second half, and they're looking very, very comfortable at this stage in the second half, Lisa. Yeah, looking really comfortable at the back. They don't look phased by anything, and I think it's because the Jez, they're finding it hard to string you know, more than three passes together and build some possession and find any gaps that are there. Uh, a lot of it is kind of long searching balls and it's quite easy for the defenders to pick off. I think at half time they've probably had a look and realised uh, that there's a lot uh, coming from Ethan McGovern, just a long hit. So they're setting themselves up to just see if they can get a hold of that um, and snuff any attacks coming from the Jays. Uh, so they'll be just trying to look a, build a bit more possession and see if they can open up a gap um, and get something from that. St. Uh, Andrews yet again on the attack with Amy Elliott. Elliott plays it back to Diggin, Diggin attempted pass to Julia Burns block but she wins possession back he's played out to this left hand side it's gone over the end line it's going to be a restart with the sideline ball for the Jez and Rian Spillane leaves the free from McGovern midway through the second half here the Jez needs something miraculous that you have to think at this stage given the way the second half has gone and maybe it's going to come and it's Fiona Kelly their vice captain on the run it's a good run from Kelly so far still going it's Fiona Kelly inside the D now St Andrews who plays the ball back inside chance here maybe for them it's O'Toole has it can she get a reverse away she can it's a great shot but an even better save by Israel can, can be and the Jays just needed that attack they needed something to go their way but they were repelled by an excellent save from the St Andrews college keeper yeah, some just excellent skill down the right-hand side there. And you can see um, Zara O'Toole looks, looks super determined in that circle. Here she is looking to win the ball back off Katie Jane again. Um, and you know something, they're really unlucky not to get something, a corner or, or something. But they've got some fantastic shots away and Isol Kambe has stood up to all of them, uh, showing exactly why she's been an underage international goalkeeper. Yeah, fantastic save from the St Andrews keeper as the Jays look to move forward again. It's Nicole O'Connell over on that far side for St Andrews with possession and manages brilliantly done from her and she gives it to Amy Elliott. Now Elliott brings play to Orr to or on this left hand side, Alex Orr. It's Orr now with the free hit, plays the ball forward to O'Leary. O'Leary now with a bit of a break, shooting chance here for St Andrews, shot, brilliant save again from Anna Donu. That's the fourth or fifth time that Donu has been forced into action like that. And it's a short corner taken quickly as Andrews go for the juggler. It's, Mc it's Martin McCready with the shot. It's got a flick from a jazz stick, but Anna Donu keeping the jazz hopes alive in this game. Well, she's been fantastic. Um, and she's made all of her previous saves with her legs. And that one, uh, she was absolutely there to match it with her stick. A phenomenal save uh, above her right head uh, from... Rachel Walsh's shot, uh, and here we now have another St Andrews short corner. It's just massive pressure there piling on the Jez. Yeah, initially we thought it was a stick that flicked that ball away from danger, but indeed it seemed to have been a foot, so it's going to be a short corner, another yet another short corner for this St Andrews side. And with Julia, Julia Byrne off the pitch, someone else taking it set. Comes to Katie Jane Marshall, she gets the shot away, it's flicked. 
It's hit. Uh, Jez stick, and it's going to be a long corner for St Andrews, who need to be start making more as the competition goes on. Need to be making more of them short corners. I'm sure that's something they look to work on in their next two games after this. As away come the Jays with Ava Durkin. Durkin now in possession under pressure from two, three defenders in the end. She does brilliantly to win a free hit for the Jays. The Jays now on the attack. Ball play forwards blocked. Fiona Kelly on the run. In fact, it's hit Fiona Kelly's foot, so it's going to be a free hit to St Andrews, and it's going to be taken by Katie Jane Marshall fairly quickly to Amy Elliott. Elliott now. Good stick work, sees her beat. Two Jazz players with a dribble. Plays the ball down, it's Diggin. Rachel Diggin in possession now for St Andrews, taking the ball all the way to the end line, but she gets a deflection from a Jazz defender. It's another long corner for. For the for St Andrews, Emilia trying to take it quickly, but not from the correct position. So she's forced to go a few meters to the right and play a brilliant cross field ball all the way across to Jasmine Barrett. Barrett tries to get a pass away, but away comes Durkin for the Jez, and it's going to be a free hit to them. And the Jez running out of time, Lisa. They need something to happen quite quickly. Yeah, and I think uh, their vice captain Fiona Kelly is proving to be a really inspiring figure here on the right wing. Uh, she's shown real skill. And she's just taking a really quick auto pass there and she's pushing them forward. Uh, so you know something, they've fantastic uh, grit here. They're really pushing to try and get a goal back. They're not saying they're done. And uh, I look forward to seeing if they can uh, make something out of it and get themselves a goal before the end of this game. Now sin binning here, two minutes in bin for St. Andrews there. Mark McCready ordered off the pitch. Good work from Gabby Lewis there, forcing a mistake from Reince Bland, hit Reince Bland's foot and Lewis plays quickly, straight up that left hand side and on to Rachel Walsh Walsh now, still in possession, looking for an opening, gives it back to Lewis, Lewis flicks it on, back inside but and wins a free hit as it turns out, looked like she'd lost possession but the umpires think differently, Katie Jane Marshall quick play again, good ball in and again Anna O'Donoghue who's off her line quickly uh, alert to the danger, kicks the ball away out over the sideline and she's been a really impressive player for the Jazz one of several that has to be said and Jasmine Barrett now across the Katie Jane March and you can see the Jays are trying to push a bit quicker now and that could leave gaps open it's Rachel Watts with a shot great shot saved by Adonu and Gabby Lewis is unable to get to the rebound but another fantastic save from the Jays keeper oh, she's had a phenomenal game and if you think about how many saves she's actually had to make in this game it probably gives us a good indication of how much pressure St Andrews have had particularly in the second half mounting it on and really every time they get into the circle they're looking dangerous and uh, Fiona Kelly is coming away with the ball here now on the right hand side and this is exactly what Jez will want a 1v1 a bit of a chase and uh, definitely a free for the Jez there oh and it's a yellow card for Devin Aikens so this will be interesting now to see if the Jez can make something out of this and of course Martha McCready also off the field so the St Andrews down to 9 at the moment Good run from Aoife McGovern. Here. Sorry, a penalty corner. I thought for a second the umpire was signaling for a penalty stroke. We saw one in the last game for Benbridge, but it's the Jez penalty corner and a massive, massive chance for them to get back into this game. Yeah, it's been really clever play. Uh, Fiona Kelly winning the free, and uh, a yellow card is quite a serious offence. So you can see umpire Graham Hone. Uh, he's given a corner for some really bad defending, uh, suggesting that it's a, a bad enough foul to warrant a short corner. So uh, the Jez, if they get something here, I'll tell you, game on for the last 10 minutes. Uh, just coming up to seven minutes remaining here. As Cuiva Cleary sets this short corner up for the Jez. Blocked by Camille Keane, comes to McGovern, all the way out to Kelly. Kelly now, we've got, that's another. Another foul from the St. Andrews defence. And St. Andrews questioning that. I think it's, it's Katie Jane Marshall that's questioning the decision of the umpire, but either way, they're not going to change their minds, we know that. And again, it's going to be Cuiva Cleary that sets this one up, and takes this one, I should say, for 
The Jazz badly in need of a goal here as we enter the final five minutes of the second half. Cleary takes, it's not set, it's a poor, very poor, and away comes St. Andrews on the counter. Huge mistake by the Jays on that occasion, it's a long ball down, and Rachel Walsh in space, takes Gabby Lewis, brilliant turn from Walsh, can she get inside, brilliant from Rachel Walsh, and that's the clinching goal, and that's an astounding, outstanding individual effort from Rachel Walsh, she flicked it past the defender, and then she saw the, an the advancing Anna Dunu come out and slip the ball under her, and Rachel Watch has been threatening that all game and finally she gets reward. Yeah, previous to this she's had two fantastic reverse stick shots and you know something, at any level in uh, hockey in Ireland you won't see a better goal than that. Some fantastic skills lifted over the goalkeeper and that finish under pressure. I mean, Anna Hodonu has been outstanding but I think uh, that goal was just something that couldn't be stopped. You have to think now with less than five minutes remaining here. That's game set and match for St Andrews who bounced back brilliantly from their opening game defeat to Crescent College, the Munster champions. 3-0 now, goals from Gabby Lewis, Katie Jane Marshall from a short corner, and that outstanding individual effort from Rachel Walsh. You know, it's, it's the, the, a bit of confidence would have dipped from that first game. We saw it in the early stages of this game where the Jazz had a lot of the early play, but the second Gabby Lewis gave them that lead, St. Andrews have looked a completely different team. Uh, yeah, they've really found their flow now and even still they're not stopping, they're continuing on the attack uh, and they'll take a huge amount of confidence from this game. They'll have a nice long rest now before they go tomorrow but they'll be a, a determined outfit to try and stop tomorrow on the back of this result today. Of course the importance of scoring difference cannot be under or overemphasised as it's been mo this competition has been won on scoring difference on a couple of occasions in the past. So, that's it. so anyone that thinks St Andrews are going to relax are very much mistaken. They're going to go for more goals. It's very important for for the Jays to, to not concede any more goals. They kind of have to, for their own sake, in the rest of this tournament. But either way, it's the Jays on the attack now, looking for a goal themselves. A goal that would be very richly deserved. It has to be said to had some very good hockey throughout this game, but as yet, yet to be rewarded. One of their star players in this game has been their number two in possession now, Fiona Kelly. Kelly flicks the ball inside, powers the ball inside, it's gone. It's going to be a free hit to St Andrews. Another chance for the Jays, half chance it has to be said on that occasion. And on that occasion it was Maeve Parsons with the effort, but she was deemed to have fouled one of the St Andrews players. And it's St Andrews that will come away. They're on the hunt for a fourth goal, and it's Juliet Byrne that will bring play into the Jazz half. Byrne plays the ball forward, it's taking a hit off, flick off Rian Spillane's stick. In fact, it hasn't thought it had on that occasion, but no. Ball's waved wide, and Ethan McGovern will restart play for the Jazz. Coming up after this game, we have Crescent and against Banbridge, Ulster, sorry, Munster champions against Ulster. That game's on at 3 p.m. We're in the dying embers of this, the third game of the Kate Russell Tournament 2019, hosted by St Andrews College, brought to you live and exclusively on Sporting Limerick. As the Jazz now come forward again, good ball, brilliantly controlled on that occasion by Jenny Rowe. Jenny Rowe, though, it's well defended on that occasion. It's Katie Murphy who's done well on that occasion, covering her angles. Looking ahead to the rest of the tournament tomorrow for St Andrews now, Lisa, like they're, they're going to take huge confidence from this victory. There's no question of that. They have a very vociferous home crowd behind them. That's definitely going to be the case tomorrow. You could even see more fans here tomorrow, given the fact that it's a Friday. Fancy their chances after this? Yeah, I, I definitely do. I think they're, they're playing some of their best hockey now, um, and they'll go in for uh, a key game against Banbridge tomorrow morning. Um, taking huge confidence from this, scoring many goals in different ways uh, will make a big difference. So they will feel that they can go out and they'll be, they'll be a difficult opponent on their home pitch for Banbridge tomorrow and would really look to push on. If they get a result in that game in the morning, um, I mean, I think uh, they'll be looking good. Thoughts of former Irish international Lisa Jacob there. It's full time here in St Andrews College where the home side have beaten the Jazz 
of Connacht, Glossary Ignard on a three goals to nil scoreline goals in the first half from Gabby Lewis Katie J- and Katie Jane Martin and that second half wonder goal from Rachel Walsh we'll be back soon for the game between Crescent College and Banbridge join us at 3pm for that